Welcome to the Dynasty Football Key. We're here to unlock the success for your future Dynasty football teams. We're going to be taking a look at the 2026 and the 2027 class. Yeah, we're really far out in advance, but I'd like to be able to see where my roster is today, knowing how many max roster spots I have and being able to think about, hey, are my players trending towards being a little bit older and out of the league, do I want to start moving my value into draft capital, which will just retain and grow in value and, you know, really make sure I have an understanding of position wise, what the strengths of a particular draft class is. So if the 2024 class is very strong at quarterback and wide receiver, but not at running back, and then we look at the 2025 class, which we just did a video on, and it's strong at running back. And then, you know, 2026, you know, hey, let's figure out the strength of that class and beyond. So with that said, let's get into the video. Perfect. Okay, so here at the 101, I've got... Nico Iamaliva, quarterback out of Tennessee. I've got him on the thumbnail and his team, um, you know, he, he was able to get in at the end of the season and win that cheese at bowl. So uh, be, beyond that, this player is 6'6", um, you know, around 200 pounds. He's got speed. We've been, I was talking on some other podcasts about the evolution of the running quarterback being able to get a running quarterback who can not only run very fast in a game-changing way, but also have the consistent passing ability to get the ball to his receivers. It's starting to seem like Nico has a shot to be that next generation of that dual threat quarterback. Excited to see this next season for him. 102, we have Dante Moore, quarterback out of UCLA. He will get another opportunity to prove if he can be that QB too. I actually have been talking to some folks who think that uh, the next player I have here is is potentially QB1 or QB2 in this class and has an opportunity to win the Heisman in Connor Wegman here at the 103 quarterback out of Texas A&M. And let me pause really quick. At the 104, we have Texas quarterback Arch Manning. We will see when he comes out of the NCAA. Right now, the Texas have Quinn Ewers at quarterback starting. We'll see if Arch Manning keeps a uh, you know his redshirt year. Um, Arch could end up taking over this season. We will see how this goes and. Um, you know, maybe he moves up or down a draft year. Um, you know, I think the name alone is going to keep him very high up the draft boards regardless. And if these four are some of the top quarterbacks, then we really might have some good competition at the, you know, really deep quarterback class in 2026. At the 105, we have wide receiver Zachariah Branch from – USC in California, really electric speed as a true freshman, really broke onto the scene week one and showed that he could be the top wide receiver in this class. At the 106, Cedric Baxter, running back out of Texas. 107, Carnell Tate, wide receiver OSU. 108, Kevin Concepcion, wide receiver out of NC State. 109, Jackson Arnold, quarterback, Oklahoma. 110, Malachi Nelson, quarterback, Boise State. 111, Eugene Wilson III, wide receiver, Florida. 112, Ruben Owen, running back out of Texas A&M. I'm going to stop here. I will actually show how I'm getting some of the research for this class and the next class. I uh, quickly wanted to just say that yeah we had a couple of guys here show out as true freshmen 
Um, I mentioned Zachary Branch, Cedric Baxter really broke onto the scene. Like I said, Nico Iamaliva really showed out. Uh, just a, a lot of good potential from, you know, flashed already from some of these guys. Uh, Malachi Nelson, he was the number one prospect coming into this year. Um, he has since transferred from USC to Boise State. So we'll see how things progress with him. But if you look at, um, you know, thanks to Shane Hallam over at the draft countdown, uh, this is from November 29th. Uh, so a little bit outdated, uh, still has some of the older schools, but you're able to see on this type of website uh, how some of these draft classes stack up and are ranked. Definitely check these out. I have some of these guys higher than they are listed here. But again, this is now three months since this was last posted. Uh, we're going to have more college football, spring ball, to, and I bet a lot more updates are going to come from here on out. And also, another thing you can look at is 24-7 sports. Uh, look at the recruiting classes. You can look at every recruiting class that's happened so far. Um, so you can see how good some of these um, teams have done as a whole. Um, and you can see some of the um, players specifically and how they have done. You can see players themselves. Again, this is really far out. These are players who are coming into college this season as true freshmen. And you'll see some of these names um, here in the next round. Uh, you, you'll see the position here in the middle column next to the name. You can see the, the star rating. Um, getting 100 is pretty rare. I'm seeing a 101 here. Um, so spoiler this guy might be at the top of the list a little bit later and look i even have the 2025 one up as well they these guys are really on it not all of these players for next year have fully committed but we know who some of the prospects are and some of these commitments will change they may be commit go to a different school especially with the name image likeness nil money that is out there so just something to look at another resource for you let's go back over to the mock draft and start the second round at the 201 i have Lou Casey, tight end arkansas 202 justice haynes running back alabama 203 tyler brown wide receiver clemson 204 makai lemon wide receiver usc california 205 jonte cook wide receiver texas 206, Caleb Jackson, running back out of LSU. 207, Aiden Childs, quarterback, Michigan State. 208, Lenora Sellers, quarterback, USC, Carolina, South Carolina. 209, Mark Fletcher, running back, Miami. 210, Jaden Greathouse, wide receiver, Notre Dame. 211, Brandon Ennis, wide receiver, Ohio State University. 212, Pierce Sperlin, tight end, Georgia. He's behind Grant. Um, he's behind Oscar Delp right now. And I've been playing some campus to Canton, and I have some of these players in, in my league, and I'm really excited to see what they do in this next season when they're no longer – just the freshman, but maybe getting a little bit more of an opportunity. Really excited to see what they do. Definitely look into joining a campus to Canton league where you have a NFL team as well as a college team that you can draft college players, start them in your lineups and compete to win a championship for the NCAA side as well as compete for an NFL championship for your fantasy league. Really fun concepts. Love Campus Canton. Here at the 303, 301, we have Deuce Robinson. He's a tight end, but even on the USC website, he's still listed as a wide receiver, really big body, and I think he could be tight end one if he refined his skills, but he may be more of a move tight end for pass catching. So we'll see how that goes, but definitely see him in the NFL at some point. 
Then we have at the 302, Georgia tight end, Lawson Lucky. We have at the 303, Darius Taylor, running back, Minnesota. 304, Nicholas Harbor, tight end, South Carolina. At the 305, we have Dylan Edwards out of Colorado, running back. That Colorado team, as I mentioned in my last video, has gotten a big boost to the offensive line, so that should help Dylan Edwards. 306, Roger Robinson, running back, Georgia. He could definitely be a riser. 307, Jurion Dickey, wide receiver out of Oregon. 308, Dontavious Braswell, running back out of South Carolina. 309, Eric Singleton Jr., wide receiver, Georgia Tech. 310, Jalen Hale, wide receiver, Alabama. 311, Cameron Selden, running back slash wide receiver in Tennessee. Hopefully that he has a connection with Nico Yamaliva that can help boost him. He was listed as an athlete last season. We'll see what he ultimately ends up playing, but if he is running back, then we know he has pass catching ability, which could help him. And to, in the draft, we have Akeem Williams, wide receiver out of Florida State. So that'll end the 2026 draft. I'm going to jump into the 2027 draft now. And to start, we have Jeremiah Smith, who was at the top of that 24 7 sports recruiting class and really has good size as a wide receiver. 6'3", 210, and at OSU, really good likelihood that he can be a good wide receiver in the future for us. 102, Micah Hudson, wide receiver, Texas Tech. 103, DJ Lagway, QB, Florida. 104, Cam Coleman, wide receiver, Auburn. 105, Dylan Rayola. QB out of Nebraska. Then at the 106, we have Ryan Williams, wide receiver out of Alabama. 107, we have Julian Sayan, quarterback, Alabama. 108, TJ Moore, wide receiver, Clemson. 109, Gatlin Bear, wide receiver, Oregon. 110, Luke Reynolds, tight end, Penn State. 111, Ryan Wingo, wide receiver, Texas. To end this way too early 2027 Ricky Mock draft, Luke Cromenhout, quarterback, Florida State. Wanted to make sure to get in that extra quarterback. This is still super flex and this far out, we don't know which quarterbacks are going to rise and fall and emerge. So it's way too early to count any of these players out, um, any of them on, on uh, and any of the 2027, 2026, 2025 classes. We will see. They've got plenty of time to show what they can do in college and eventually in the league. But you'll see this 2027 class. I don't have a good beat on the running back strength but it does seem to be you know really strong at wide receiver especially at the top uh, i will reserve judgment on the quarterback class let that develop a little bit and in the 2026 class definitely quarterbacks available definitely wide receivers available that we're going to want to take shots on and i think there are still running backs that i do like um from what i've seen I would not say that it's very deep at running back. Uh, Cedric Baxter will be nice. I, I like these top three. It, it won't be completely barren. It won't be uh, that uh, bad, and it could get even better. Uh, I would I would say this is maybe one of the more well-rounded draft classes we've seen in, the, in a while because at least we have one um, really key player at the top of each position. Uh, maybe not tight end, but in general, for the top three skill positions, we're looking pretty good in 2026. So start collecting those 2026 picks yesterday. My Fantasy Football League, that drafting platform, 
just reset for the 2024 season. So you may have your 2026 picks now. Some get them after their 2024 rookie drafts. Uh, but absolutely in sleeper, you have your 2026 picks. So start collecting those if you need quarterback, wide receiver, or running back. And I really appreciate it, everyone. Thank you for checking out this 2026 and 2027 rookie mock draft. And I hope to see you in the next video.